sorry I've got the camera set up here in a makeshift uh, in a makeshift way I've got a boom set up and I'm going to try to be as clear with this as possible I'm going to zoom in I'm going to demonstrate my technique for indirect percussion what I do is I take my what looks like a pressure flaker stick it behind my knee to hold it still my foot's on that rock down there I've got a piece of Texas flint I'm going to reduce down remove the cortex I'm not going to be doing too much explaining during the video I'm just going to go ahead and do it and we'll get this down to a preform hopefully see if I can do this and not bump into the camera and still be able to see the work I'm doing anyway I set this uh, this is a piece of copper wire that's just set into a hole that I drilled in this uh, Delrin rod I think it's Delrin and I set the uh, indirect percussion flaker on the edge of the flint just knock a flake off Let's see if this turns out okay that one you can see went across a good ways we still got a ways to go to reduce this thing but I'm just going to do it quickly I'm not going to explain too much I'm just going to go ahead and do it Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, kind of get a bird's eye view of what I'm doing. Just removing the cortex. I have to lower that edge down. Antler. I use it both as a uh, direct percussion billet and uh, my little mallet for my indirect percussion tool. Well, you can see it. You can see how I'm starting to remove the. Uh, Starting to remove the cortex off the edge. I'm going to need to come across here somehow. And uh, I make mostly bird points. This is going to end up fairly small. Right now I guess what you call it is a turtle back. It's coming along. What I'm eventually going to need to do is thin out this hump. This side is already pretty flat, so I don't need to do too much to that. Just got to figure a way to attack this hump here. A little cold this morning. I'm kind of shivering a little bit. I'm going to use a larger indirect percussion tool. This is a piece of antler. Let's see if I can knock off a big flake with this. Get in there and remove that big turtle back somehow. I'm going to take a hammer stone. Lower this edge. Now, I'm not an expert flint napper by any means. 
I've been doing this for a little while. But hopefully the uh, audio is good on this. I'm new to video and audio. Microphone wire getting in the way there. See what I'm doing. It's kind of hard to see the camera viewer and look what I'm doing at the same time. A lot of that cortex is coming off. I'm attacking it from wherever I can. I don't have any system to it. Make sure that the uh, platforms are solid. Sometimes the cortex is easy to get off because it's fairly solid like the stone. This one is kind of crumbly. I think I can get it off. Sometimes from the when you hit on the end like that it'll snap the point in half, but this has still got some really good thickness to it. So I'm not afraid at this point. This is a hard hammer stone. I use mainly hard hammer stones because they're just quicker. Soft hammer stones produce small flakes, thin flakes. Now I developed this technique because I was having trouble with pressure flaking. I really couldn't get the hang of pressure flaking. I don't know if my hands are just not strong enough or I wasn't doing it right, but I just can't get this kind of results with pressure flaker. See that? That took off quite a bit. I hit it from the corner. I can't do that with a pressure flaker. I'm sure some guys can. just can't seem to develop the leverage or the power to do it. This allows me to strike with as much force as I want in a small area and it usually does the trick. What I'm doing is I just dull in the edges so they won't be sharp. If they're too sharp they'll just crush. thinning from the sides more now. It's getting a little bit thin to start punching from the ends. It might snap the stone in half. I don't know if I can show you what I'm doing here. Just doing a row. A pass across this. I guess I call it a continuous platform. These flakes are traveling more than halfway across, so it's thinning out pretty nice. 
seriously. on here I'm going to take down. We're almost done with the preform. See I'm doing it's a there's a little crushing going on here. That's because the edge is too sharp there. That's easily taken care of later. Well, maybe not easily, but I can do it later. So you don't want a, an edge that's all crushed. You won't be able to flick across those terminations. I took off a little bit of that, but there's still the edge is still pretty bad right now. But the preform is coming along. I will stop here in a minute and show you how thin it is. How straight or how, how lack of how unstraight it is. stop right there. This is a, pretty much a preform. I'll show you a, an arrowhead in comparison. I guess this is a good one. We're almost to the same thickness as the arrowhead. It's relatively flat. The actual specimens, a lot of times they weren't perfectly flat. They had some wave, but uh, there you go. From a big clunky piece of uh, chert down to a preform. <laughs>